it's a bond for life now, is what we said it's like. It's you bonded forever by a medal. It did take me a while to sort of realise it's not putting your life on hold as such. It's you're still achieving something, it's just something different to what everybody else is doing. My plan is to inspire young children to get into school um, and to love it and enjoy it and almost try not to worry about results. It is pride, but also being able to share it with other people is just amazing and it's hard to describe it in words how you actually feel. I'm Emily Ford, I am from Holmes Chapel in Cheshire. I went to university and from then decided to pursue my rowing career, moved down to Henley-on-Thames and got into the GB rowing team and then since then have competed at various World Cups, Europeans, World Championships and the Tokyo Olympic Games and the Paris Olympic Games where I got a bronze medal. There's a lot to go through there. Um, go all the way back <laughs> and start kind of like... <laughs> We'll go all the way back and start kind of like um, when you were younger. Were you always a sporty kid? Um, no. I enjoyed sport, but we did a lot of swimming and I couldn't dive in and I absolutely hated it. Um, but mum and dad got me involved in like netball and hockey and stuff at school and I way preferred that. But um, my two older brothers, they started rowing because they got told they were tall and they thought they'd be good at school so they gave it a go um and then because there's four of us um i think it was easier for them and dad to pick us up from one place and drop us off at one place rather than <laughs> us all being dotted over everywhere um but my two older brothers were very good at um rowing they competed in nationally um in a double together and i thought it was amazing to be able to do that with your brother so to be fair those two are the ones that inspired me to get involved when did you realise, like, this is actually something I'm pretty good at? I don't know, really. I think um, I, I'm not very that good at self-confidence, if I'm being really br brutally honest. Um, I've had a lot of uh, belief and confidence from my coaches, and I think without them I probably wouldn't be where I am today. And that's from back when I was at school, at uni, and to this day. So, like, there's, there's so many people to thank for that. But um, I do think... I don't know that there was necessarily a time, but I think there was a time where I started to believe that I have to believe in myself, if that makes sense, rather than thinking, oh, yes, I can definitely do this. I think it was more like a, you need to believe in yourself so that you can do it if you're wanting to do it. And I think that is what got me to where I am. Was there a reason for that shift or was it kind of just over time it kind of happened that you realised, look, if I want to, if I want to, I mean, it's hard to say if I want to get to a level because you were already kind of at that level for a very long time. But like, was there a turning point where you're like, I need to kind of believe in myself a little bit more here? Um, I probably when I moved down to Henley to row full time, um, I think because I'd done under 23s when I was at um, university. And that was in my mind, just a bit of fun on the side of what like I was achieving and it was fun. Um, and then when I decided that I was going to um, do it full time, I was like, well, you've you've sort of put your life on hold a little bit to do this. So you're going to have to believe in yourself and see what you can do. Putting your life on hold, that's that's always a funny one, isn't it? Because like when you look back at your at your rowing career, when you're you know, when you've retired, when you're not doing it anymore. What what do you hope to feel about that? that period of your life like when you look back at it when you're maybe not in it anymore um I actually think I feel it now I think like I said then like initially I thought that was putting my life on hold um I mean you end up missing a lot of weddings and various other sort of parties and celebrations and all that kind of thing just because of the nature of the sport that like we train at a weekend as well so like your sort of social time as it were can be taken away um but i think even just now having a medal um well not even having a medal i think just going to even at tokyo when i didn't get a medal after tokyo i think it's like what you've done is gone to the olympics and that's pretty cool um and not many people can say they have done that um you're in a very small percentage of the population um and 
your friends will stick by you and support you and they'll always be there. So I think it did take me a while to sort of realize it's not putting your life on hold as such. It's you're still achieving something. It's just something different to what everybody else is doing. Um, and yeah, you can celebrate with your friends after it all. What does it feel like to kind of say those words? Like, obviously you, you went to Tokyo as well, but now you're an Olympic medalist to like actually hear that, to say that, to, to live that. What, what does that, what does that make you feel like? Um, it's taken a while to sink in. I don't know if it's actually fully sunk in yet. Um, I, I do feel very proud. Um, I love being able to show people the medal. I love people being able to hold it. Um, and we just, we went to our, back to our university yesterday, back to Newcastle and they did a little homecoming for us. And it was, it was just so nice to be back at, back at the club again and to show the current students like what we did well not what we did there but everything that they're doing is what we did and we came out of it and managed to achieve this it's definitely all part of my journey so um and we go back into school and um see everybody there so it, it is pride but also being able to share it with other people is just amazing and it's hard to describe it in words how you actually feel um people always often often ask me what it was like like seeing our family for the first time and i don't think well me mum and dad didn't exchange any words there were a lot of tears but there were no words um and it, it was honestly just an amazing moment that will stick with me forever but i would never be able to put it into words what it actually felt like because yeah it was just very special what was it like the moment that you know you were you were sat on that start line in the boat with the crew did you did you think that there was this is a potential where what were your hopes for the race and and when you when it played out as it played out and you you came in bronze medal position what was that kind of realization like oh my god like this has actually happened here yeah um difficult question that one i think i definitely believed that we could get a medal long before the star line um i think we we had a training camp before we went out so we were in italy and we had a big i think it was five or six weeks i can't remember now i think it was that um and during that time i was like you know what we're we're going we're, we're doing this and i really do think that we can medal i don't know what color it will be but i do really think we can medal um and then we went out to paris and we raced our heat and our heat was very very good and probably rode the best we rode um and at that point i was like okay the the stars are aligning and this is this is happening and i'm like we're reaping the rewards of what we've put in here um and then i mean often you get doubts that creep in and all of that but you need to sort of shut those down and as a crew, we were very good at sort of talking to one another if you were having sort of a, I don't know, a bad moment or whatever it is and just saying, like, this is what I'm feeling, this is what I'm thinking. Um, and there would always be somebody that's having the up when you're having the down. So it was always good to like have them to bring you back in. Um, and then just on the start line, I think all I thought about was, well, you're here now, you've got to get to the other end. And the only way to do that is to do what you've been doing for however long and you just got to take one stroke at a time and yeah the result sort of in a way will take care of itself if you do what you've been doing was my thought it's really interesting because like you know we've had a lot of people on this podcast over the years that talk about start line nerves from uh somebody just running for the sake of enjoyment but still wanting to pursue like a pb or do the best that they can for mm. their ability all the way up to like elite level athletes marathoners etc cetera, etc cetera. and everybody kind of has that same feeling about the start line like once you're there you can't do anything else then can you you've just gotta you've gotta you're gonna get out what you put in yeah and, and that's obviously what what you guys got on that day um which must have felt really good in terms of like thinking back to that effort that you put in on those training camps those years of early mornings those years of sacrifices 
did it all did it almost feel like a like a a moment of culmination if that makes sense yeah definitely I, I to be honest I don't really remember sort of the last 500 meters of the race if I'm being really honest there was a lot going on um the crowd was amazing it was so loud um and I remember crossing the line and I think I was a bit like I think I, I did celebrate but in my when I look back I'm like I don't fully remember that part um but yeah I mean like you say people are gonna they get on start line and you'll still be nervous but like the warm-up is always quite nervous and we spoke a lot actually as a crew about how uh often our warm-up would be very nervous and you the boat would not be feeling the best at all and we started to learn to trust the fact that if if we were nervous it was a it was a good thing we cared about what we were doing and we could use the like the nervous energy to in a, in a positive way as opposed to a negative way because i think often it is easy to think oh gosh i'm really nervous and this is all going to go wrong whereas actually if you're nervous it's because you care and you've put so much into it beforehand that you want it to go well and because of that it's trusting that the stuff that you have put in beforehand is going to carry you through um so yeah, definitely, I think line up on the start line is it's hard to just think about like for, for running, just taking that first step, or for whatever sport it is, just taking that first stroke, step, jump, whatever it is, and trusting that you've got to just do one one thing after another, one after another, and it's it's yeah, just trusting everything that you've done, and you'll get across that finish line. Um, but yeah, the moment across the finish line. <laughs> It, I think I was also I wasn't fully convinced we'd medals because we've we've got two boats coming at us on this side and we were very close to the Canadians on this side and I was like well have we done it and then so it, it's a very strange feeling um because part of you is like you've done it part of you is like have you done it I think also because you've built up to it for so long that you're like Okay, is it happening? Are we sure? <laughs> what was the what was the medal ceremony like? Because I would imagine that was an incredibly emotional moment. Yeah, it definitely was. Um, well, prior to that, because um, my brother is in the men's eight, so I just watched his sort of like last ten strokes or something um, from where you because you have to come off the water and get changed into your outfit, so you're all sweaty and horrible. So I was actually shoving my clothes on. I was like, I need to get outside because Tom's about to come out come down and so I was cheering him on um and then I'd got so much emotion because he'd got gold and then obviously we'd got bronze so yeah there was a lot of emotion but to be able to share that with people that you've been training with for so long is just so special like it's a bond for life now is what we said it's like it's you bonded forever by a medal um and the medal ceremony was I mean, there was a lot of people in and out of tears and everyone putting their arm around each other, but also to look up at a, like a grandstand full of so many people was just incredible. Um, all these people watching you, you're like, whoa, is this actually me? Um, so yeah, it, it was very, very special. What does it feel like now? Because you've kind of already said like it maybe hasn't fully sunk in yet. We're not like we're not really far removed from it actually happening. So mm. like coming back to to everyday life, is that a little bit weird? Like you haven't got this huge goal to, to focus on right now that you've had for kind of the last four years? Um, I'd love to say that normal life has resumed. But I just don't think it has. There's been... Um, so many people that are asking us to like do things and go into like I say school and go back into Newcastle and things like that and people doing like little homecoming things for us and it it's I mean it's not normal life um but it's it's a very very fun and cool way of life but um I'm very appreciative of of it because I think if we'd have gone back into like you say normal life I think we'd have all been a bit like oh what now um so I think in a couple of weeks when it's all calmed down a bit it will be it will be very different um but I think at that point is when it will sink in because you'll have had a moment to be like oh okay now I've done all of that um I had time to think about what the next steps are 
is that something you've considered like next steps what 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 are you thinking um i'm not sure uh i'm not sure what i'm thinking rowing wise so at the moment i want to have some time out and have actual headspace to decide what i'm going to do um i think after tokyo i struggled quite a bit um we didn't have the best result um so i came back and i started back we had a four week break whatever it was and i started straight back because i was like i want to get going again go to the next olympics and turn that result around um so it took me a while then to get back into the swings of things and get back into loving it again um so i wanted to make sure that after paris that i had some time to be able to think and not rush back because we've got four years so there's plenty of time um so my plan is to um use my sort of resources and my um well me really to inspire young children to get into sport um and to love it and enjoy it and almost try not to worry about results i know that i've spoken a lot about results but trying not to worry about results and it's it's getting involved and it's and it's doing it and it's a really fun thing to do there's so much that sport gives you um that i think we as elite athletes take for granted um i mean you walk into any rowing club and you've got an instant family and i think that's something that's really special um and i'm sure that's of most sports clubs so to be able to give that to young children who may not necessarily have a great background at home, like we, you don't know, um, but it just takes one person to ask them how they are and that can change their, change their day, really. And I was, you know, that's, that's one of the reasons we wanted to have you on here as well, because when we initially had a conversation, you had a chat and, and mentioned about like getting young people into sport and that being something you're incredibly passionate about over the years obviously sport will have will have taught you so much like leading up to this point now where you can call yourself an olympic medalist what are those what are those lessons you think you you take from sport into this sort of day-to-day life and, and what has it what has it brought you over the years there's the obvious things for us which is teamwork um we work in a huge team um and we need each other to spare each other on but also to push each other's boundaries and we're constantly like constantly competing each other uh, daily so yeah we definitely need each other and to work in team and help each other out but also like, like i say push each other's boundaries um then there's sort of time management um especially when i was at school and at uni like i was doing all my training alongside my homework and my uni work so <laughs> like making sure i could fit everything that i wanted to do in as well as getting that done because needed to do that um and then the dedication um and the sacrifices that i've made and it all being worth it but dedicating my mind to something um i think has definitely taught me quite a lot um but my main thing which i touched on before is the community um that well rowing has given me but there are other sports clubs out there or sports that create a similar community um for example, like with rowing, you could walk into any rowing club and you're welcomed with open arms and somebody will just ask you how you are, which sounds very silly, but there's people out there, there's children out there, there's adults out there that don't have that. And I think to, for sport to be able to do that and empower people like that is just, um, it's just incredible. And I think it's a tool that's taken for granted is like, yeah, you can create such a huge community that can sort of I don't know, give people that love and that support around them that they may not necessarily have. Um, and it's a safe space or should be a safe space for people to come into and to enjoy it. It's the life lessons it teaches as well, right? Like I remember growing up, I played a lot of rugby, obviously being a team sport, the people you meet, the sort of places that you go that you would never have gone. And I would imagine that's very similar to rowing. Like like you mentioned, you go into a rowing club, you see a group of people, you're with them on a sort of week by week, day to day basis in a lot of cases. And you kind of build up those skills, I guess, those social skills that maybe 
in you know you don't get in other parts of your life where do you get to meet so many people from so many different backgrounds if you're not involved in a team sport and i think that's that's one of those things that people forget about sometimes when they think about sport don't they i think sometimes people think oh it's an individual endeavor it's even with something like running which is more solo you can go to a running club you can involve yourself with you know big groups of big groups of um people at clubs or meetups or with coaches and it's that kind of connectiveness that i feel like you don't really get anywhere else do you apart from sport yeah no definitely and i mean something like rowing uh running in comparison to rowing like running is in a way is very accessible um you can stick on a pair of trainers and step out the front door and go running um and you can pick up your mates or i don't know your next door neighbor that you may be having a hard time you can take them out and it's not that you have to be fast um it's just going out and giving the support to other people and have like like i say having a good time um so yeah definitely so many so many life lessons you actually came straight from back from Paris and straight over to Tatton Park, um, which was amazing to see. Like, um, what, what didn't you want to rest? I shall start with that. Yeah, didn't you want to rest? It was great having you, obviously, but um, I was like, she only just got back. <laughs> um, so I actually bought it or bought the, the entry for like for my uh, boyfriend. Um, again, I'm really trying to get him into sport um he used to play rugby and then got a knee injury and dare I say hasn't really done a lot since and i yeah obviously a huge advocate for sport and absolutely love it and i so i bought him to the trainers and i bought him this entry for his birthday don't know if he liked it but he says he did <laughs> um no he um absolutely loved it and he was even he came from that event and he was like it was just so cool to run with such a huge group of people. And he was like, well, it really like encouraged me not to stop because um, you've got all these people that are doing exactly the same thing with you at the same time. And you can have a good time with it. Like he was, would be running past people and just, you know, like have a little chat or cheer them on or whatever it is. And, and that is something that's so special. And like I say, you, something that you get from sport is, doing it with other people and doing it as a team and creating that bond and like he was obviously cheering people on and that was for me was something that was so cool to watch because he wasn't necessarily like super excited to go and do it because he isn't a huge runner which is also fine but then to actually watch him go and have a good time and come back from it and say that he wants to do another one was was just great and you know it's that feeling afterwards isn't it i i think you you're you're somebody that obviously is is gonna know that feeling of exercise endorphins more than most because of the amount of training you will have put in over the years and i'm sure at many times and at many points in your career you've thought i screw screw these endorphins i I don't want to get up and do it (laughs) but like it is something that happens every time isn't it you get that you get that feeling, you get that rush, you get that that thing that just helps you think a bit more clearly. And I think that's one of the amazing things as well. Like, and I'm sure you feel this, the clarity you get through exercise is just, I always find if I'm stressed or, you know, I need to make a decision or stuff's going on at work. If I just go and do something, I don't know what it is about it, but it just helps you be a bit more clear and think a little bit more logistically i guess rather than making any rash or emotional decisions yeah definitely and there's like a, there's a huge feeling of like accomplishment and achievement when you've gone and done something as well um but it definitely also like you say clears your mind and often with like with rowing like you could have had a bad session or whatever it is but often you then feel like you don't want to do another one or you don't want to get up and like you say you don't want to get up and do it but once you just get yourself started you're like oh okay and like you say you can think and you've got a clear mind and um it's definitely good to get headspace as well and getting out and getting some fresh air can can do a whole world of good i want to finish with this emily because we kind of mentioned tokyo earlier on 
and then you've obviously come back and in Paris you've won a medal after a disappointing result four years previous. I'm sure there'll be loads of people listening to this right now that have had a disappointing result. They've trained and thought they were in a place and maybe have come away with something that they weren't happy with. How, what, what did, like, how did you go from that place of disappointment to that place of succeeding? What was, what was that, those four years like? And what were those main lessons, I guess you could, you could give to somebody that maybe is kind of dealing with a little bit of disappointment right now in, in athletic endeavor? Yeah. Um, it, I mean, going back to, I, th I think it was more than just disappointment. I think I was also embarrassed. Um, I remember I'd come back and everyone was like, oh, but you went to the Olympics. We're still so proud of you. That's amazing. You're still an Olympian. And I remember thinking, that's really kind of you, but that isn't what I set out to achieve. That isn't what I went to the Olympics to do. Um, and like you said, I, I went back and it probably took me a good 10 months if not more to actually enjoy what i was doing again um i'd wake up each morning and i'd be like oh, i've got to get up i've got to go and do it again if if i want to go and achieve what i want to achieve um so it was definitely very very hard um but I remember thinking to myself, you need to be kind to yourself. You need to give yourself time. You need to give yourself headspace. And I made sure that I found other things that I enjoyed doing, other things that I loved, whether it was even just, I don't know, going for a walk down the river. Um, or I think I started doing some more crafty bits um, and using those as my other bits of headspace. Um, and then I started to realize that actually what I loved was rowing it and it wasn't the result that necessarily mattered. It did matter at that point in time, but what I loved was rowing. And if I'd have dwelled on it even longer, then I, I wasn't going to move forward. Um, and that's obviously a lot easier to say once you've come out of it, but in the moment, you can't see the wood from the trees, you can't see that. But you have to just realise that to to move forward and to be able to go and do it and achieve what you want to achieve, you can't just sit and dwell. And it'll take time to overcome it, but even just noting things down on a piece of paper, I think I've got loads of scrap pieces of paper that I was writing things on. Um, and to then be able to look back on them once you've got through that and read what you were feeling and then what you're feeling now is well it, it's so empowering for what you're trying to achieve because you've you've overcome that hurdle you've overcome the obstacle um but yeah definitely just realizing why you do it and why you want to do it can really help you understand the even understand the disappointment that you've sort of gone through and, and are going through um and just remembering that, like, you're not, that result doesn't determine who you are. Um, but what is in the future can help determine who you are. So trying to grasp hold of that future and seeing what you can do with it is, is what I would say to somebody is thinking, yes, okay, you've not had the best result now, but you've got a big, long future ahead of you and you can go and do whatever you want with that. But you need to have a clear mind and love what you're doing to be able to go and do it. Um, so like I said, being kind to yourself, but also remembering why you want to achieve what you want to achieve.